following program was a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools, funded in part by the Virginia Satellite Educational Network. Hello, I'm glad you can join us. My name is Della Kidd, and I'm very pleased to welcome back to the MTA Studios children's author, Laura Malone Elliott. Surrounded by the beautiful artwork by illustrator Lynn Munsinger and students from Greenbrier East Elementary School, today's show is an introduction to how picture books are written, revised, and published by focusing on three titles of a series, Hunter's Best Friend at School, Hunter and Stripe and the Soccer Showdown, and Hunter's Big Sister. And Laura, for those who don't know the series, how would you describe Hunter and Stripe? Hunter and Stripe are a series of three books that star little raccoons as they are trying to deal with certain issues that kids would have as they're growing up and going through school. Uh, Hunter's Best Friend at School first talks about what friendship really is and how you um, are a good friend and how you um, want to behave in schools. The Soccer Showdown is about when you have to actually compete against your best friend during a very important game. And the third story, Hunter's Big Sister, is about how you get along with your sibling even when they might be a little annoying sometimes. Oh, that sounds like things we've all might have experienced in our lifetime, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, Laura, students have sent in questions from all over the country, email questions. We're going to be opening our phone line shortly. Right. So we need to go ahead and get started with the first question. This is an email. It's from Cherry Run Elementary, and students in Ms. Swartz's second grade want to know, Dear Ms. Elliott, are the things in Hunter and Stripe based on events from your childhood or things that happen to your own children? This is a great question. I get asked all the time. Um, actually, my children are my best inspiration, truly. Um, but here's the fun part about being a writer. You get to use ideas that come from things that happen to you or things that happen to your children or things that you've read. And here's a big word that I love to teach students when I come and talk to them. And you guys get to be my guinea pigs here, OK? You ready? When you write, your characters, your plot, your story, everything you write is an amalgamation. Can you say that? Amalgamation. Very good. I want you to use that word tonight, okay? Amalgamation means a combination of things, a mixture of things. So Hunter, for instance, is a little piece, is actually very much like my son. It has a little bit of me and him too. Um, uh, Glenna, his big sister, is very much the way my daughter was in taking care of my son when he was little. Um, it has a little bit of my big sister in her too. The actual series started, and my son says it's okay for me to share this with you, the series started when my son got busted at preschool one day for going along with his best friend. I know you guys have never done anything like that before. It's very hard sometimes when your friend's pressuring you to act mischievous because frankly being silly is kind of fun, isn't it, right? But it's not what you really want to do in circle time. So my son came home from school and was a little distressed knowing that there was something he hadn't quite gotten right that day. And rather than my um, wagging a finger at him and saying, just because your best friend jumped off a cliff doesn't mean you have to too. Have you ever heard that? Yeah. I heard that. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, I decided to build a story with him, it was kind of a bedtime story, so that he could think through different ways of behaving that might help him. Um, and to come to learn that if you're a friend, sometimes it means you have to help your best friend be his best self, not just always go along. So that's how the series started. Well, we're glad it did. We have an email. This is from Diane Ryan's third grade reading group at Rolling Valley Elementary, and they would like to know, how did you pick the names? Uh, well, the names were a lot of fun because we made the switch from human children, Timmy and Frank, to um, raccoons, which let me be a lot more creative. If you think about the names Hunter, Glenna, Luna, Stripe, Mr. Ringtail, those are all characteristics of a raccoon, right? So um, it was really fun. Luna, for instance, means, do you guys know what that means? means moon, all right? So, and raccoons are nocturnal, another big word for you. They come out at night. Um, so Luna would come from that. So it was a lot of fun picking the names. Let's go to our audience. All right, who has a question? Let's start with Madison. What is your question? Why did you choose to use raccoons in the hunter stories? Um, another good question. Uh, it did start out as children. And I actually gave my, um, my manuscript, which is a typed version of a story, to a very dear friend of mine, illustrator Henry Cole, who was kind enough to read it for me. And he said, from the perspective of a um, 
illustrator, that it would be a lot more fun for him to draw little animals. And he suggested that we have um, animals with hands that might be slightly mischievous. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of anything more mischievous than raccoons. We used to have them around my house. And uh, there was one that actually got up into the garage. We had kind of a little office above the garage. And he tore apart boxes and boxes of magazines. It's like he'd been reading them all night long. So um, raccoons are a lot of fun to use. You know, Laura, we have a draft of the, of the story, Timmy and Frank, and we're going to put it up on the screen for folks to look at. Okay. Okay. So could you tell us a little bit about the draft and the writing process? I see some markups at the top of that. Yes. And um, writers like very much to share ideas sometimes. And you go to somebody that you really trust and somebody um, whose ideas you would really respect. And the next thing that happens is when you turn a manuscript in, then your editors do the same thing, you know, that they make different suggestions and tightening. And you always want to follow along because they always make stories better. They always do. We have another question. This is from Nathaniel at Rolling Valley Elementary. And he would like to know why was the setting at school. Why did you choose school? Um, because what happened to my son happened at school, frankly, and as a journalist I always try to follow what happens in real life. But the setting of school is a really good place to present um, problems that your characters have to get through because so much happens at school, right? You guys learn about multiplication and you know the pie theory and those kinds of things. But you also need to learn about who you are how to behave with one another, how to say things without hurting people's feelings. So the school presents a good um, springboard for a lot of those themes. But when you're writing a story, too, you don't want it to be in the abstract. You want it to be located in a place that the reader can picture. And so if you root it in a place, it gives the reader a sense of, of um, where they are and where these things would be happening. Sure, because we talk a lot in school about making connections in our reading, and we want to make a connections in our writing for the audience that, that's going to be reading our own piece, right? OK. We have a few questions about the role of the illustrator. A student in Ms. Zabaleta's class wants to know, do you know the illustrator? She's got several questions. Do you know the illustrator? Did you tell the illustrator that you wanted raccoons? And what do you think of the cover? I don't know the illustrator personally. I'm a huge fan of hers, though. When they told me that um, what happens when you write a book like this, you send it up, your editor accepts it, and then the editor chooses the illustrator to do the pictures for your book. And you know, by the way, in a picture book, the most compo important component of it are the drawings, truly. Um, so when she said Lynn Munzinger, I did this dance. I was so excited. I love Lynn Munzinger. And I had been reading her books to my children for years, especially Tacky the Penguin, which is one of their most favorite things. Um, so I was thrilled. And the manuscript had already turned by that point to being about raccoons, so I didn't tell her to do that. And I wouldn't really dare to tell Lynn Munsinger anything because she's so remarkable. Everything she does is basically perfect. Yeah, she's extremely talented. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah. So, And I think probably you have, um, it's so much fun to watch her go from her sketches to her um, final drawings, the things that she adds. She's a very meticulous um, illustrator and quite remarkable. Well, I know that you brought a printer's proof sheet with you. I Is did. that what it's called? Yes. Could you share that with us? We might need some help, Allison. Yes. <laughs> well, um, part of why I brought this is that uh, kids always ask me how long it takes to do a book. Well, it takes a long time. It takes three years from beginning to fruition for these books anyway. And there are lots of different steps. There's my writing, then there are the sketches, then there are the galleys, then there are the proofs, then they're on and on and on. And then finally it goes to press. And what they do is, you're going to help me with this, right? This is, they take a very big machine, the printing press, and this, it prints out the book on something called a 16-page signature. I just love to show this to you guys because this is one big, huge sheet. And if you turn it on the other side, there's the other 16 pages. So the whole 32-page book is actually right here um, on this paper. And what they do then is they take it to another big machine that cuts it and folds it and makes it into a book, and then it goes to binding. But it's just kind of fun to look at this and see how they do all this. It would be fun to watch that machine in action turning this into a book, wouldn't it? While you're rolling this up, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll open the phone lines at 1-800-231-6359. But first, a brief snapshot on how one librarian and her students find personal connections through picture books. And when we return, finding the right title and much, much more. Picture books are accessible. They're short, and whether your ability to read or even understand the language is great, the picture 
carries the story. The, like when I want to come into my big sister's room, she doesn't let me. Oh, now that can be a big problem when they can see a character going through what they're going through and solving those issues, solving those problems. They're able to take a little of that and apply it. When my best friend found a new friend, she didn't want to play with me anymore. Oh, that would make me sad. Did you find another friend? Yes. That is a good solution. What Hunter the books help do. them to understand and make the connections between their lives and their experiences. It helps them to make sense of what they're seeing. Think all the way to adulthood that you cannot enjoy a good picture book. Yeah. Indeed, picture books are for all ages and a great teaching tool. With me in the MTA studios are students from Greenbrier East Elementary and the creator of Hunter and Stripe, Laura Malone Elliott. We're going to take a question from Bedad now. Go ahead, Bedad, what's your question? Um, when you were making your book, did you get to pick your cover for your book? Um, I'm involved in the cover art. Um, actually, everything about making a book is very collaborative. Um, there are many instances, for instance, where I love the pictures that the illustrations that um, Ms. Munzinger has done enough that I'll change my words to suit her pictures better because they're so remarkable. Um, as the covers were actually, um, um, she, you go through a, um, a variety of different choices with the covers that involve the color and the type and even the titles themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, before we share some of the, the, the cover artwork that, we, that you brought with you, we have a question from Rachel. We have a call. Hi, Rachel. What is your question today for Laura? Why did you want to become an author? Becoming an author is such a fun thing to do because you get to ask all these how come questions all the time. You know, how come people act the way they do? How come, how will we react in this kind of situation? Why do they do that kind of thing? And when you're a writer, you get to think about all those questions. It's a lot of fun. You get to meet remarkable people and you're thinking all the time about life around you. So I really wanted to do it always. Okay. We've got some artwork. We were talking about titles and picture covers before, and you brought with you a couple the, uh, from Hunter's Big Sister, and the first one is excellent. Lynn did a beautiful job, but I know that when she took a look at it, she decided to make some changes, and it turned into this one. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, one of the things that's so remarkable about Lynn Munzinger is that the sense of whimsy that she mm -hmm. can have on these raccoons' faces and all the characters that they do. She has, she can catch both sadness and happiness mm -hmm. and joy and mischievousness. It's really phenomenal. This one really captures the kind of um, very affectionate and, and playful relationship that Hunter on the little one has mm -hmm. with Glenna, where he's been tying uh, signs onto her tail because he's been pestering her a little bit, you know. So that was just a really wonderful um, shift that Lynn had made. And you can see the first one's also in green, this mm -hmm. one's in purple. All sorts of people, go, going back to your question, all sorts of people make decisions regarding the cover. Um, they want the book to be as uh, attractive and um, inviting to you as possible. And so a lot of people think about what colors would be mm -hmm. best and titles and stuff like that. So. We have another call. This is from Melody. Hi, Melody. What is your question today? Hi, Ms. Elliott. My name is Melody. Hi, I'm Melody. Greenbrier East. My question is, how long did it take to write your first book? Um, you know, books, different books take different lengths of time. The first book, Hunter's um, Best Friend at School, I actually wrote in a couple of days. Now, I've been a professional journalist for a long time, so there have been times that I've had to write 2,000, 3,000 words very quickly in five or six days. So writing a picture book didn't take me that long, but it takes a long time for the whole thing to come out. There are other books that I do, like historical fiction, that'll be almost 400 pages, and that'll take me a couple of years to write. It's a big difference in time. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> well, we took a brief peek at the Dogwood Elementary book talk a bit earlier. Let's go to some of the pre-taped questions students asked. Roll the tape. What is your favorite children's book besides your own? Mr. Elliot, how many years did it take you to write Hunter and Stripe books? Yes, Mrs. Elliot, where do you write your stories? Do you use a writer's notebook? Mrs. Elliot, how do you know what your ending is going to be? All 
Oh, great uh, questions. <laughs> excellent questions, Lauren. As a writer for young readers and young adult students, let's start with the last question, which was, how do you know what the ending will be? Ooh, the hard one yeah. first. Um, when you're writing, the hardest thing to write is your beginning and your ending. But you better know what your ending is, or you'll start at the beginning and you might wander way off course. So with um, Soccer Showdown, for instance, uh, that I started, I knew that I wanted to talk about competing with your best friend and how you stay a, a good sport even if you don't win the game, because this happens all the time, right? It's an important mm -hmm. issue that you guys need to deal with. So I thought of the ending first. Is I had to think, okay, does Hunter win? Does Hunter lose? Can I make it easy and have them both tie so they both kind of win? And I don't know if you know the book or not. I hope I don't um, spoil it for you. but. Um, Hunter loses that game. And it's important that the harder ending occurs because he has to pull out of himself being a good sport because really the whole point of that book is to learn um, about friendship again, but also it's as important how you play as whether you win or not. Absolutely. Before we move on to a the other parts of that question, Evan, you've got a, a board there that I'd like for you to show to, uh, to the audience so that Laura can talk a little bit about this. Laura, I noticed that each of the illustrations in, on this board are identical, and yet the, the titles are different. Tell us about that. Well, that is part of the process of picking the cover. The title's very critical. Mm -hmm. And you go back and forth. There's so many wonderful books out there. I don't know if you know the Frog and Toad series, for mm -hmm. instance. You know, in my mind at first, I was thinking Hunter and Stripe is like Frog and Toad. But they thought that maybe that was a little too similar. Um, it didn't really tell the whole story. Best Friends at School was really dead on in terms of what the story's about. It tells but the it theme does, of the story. Yeah, mm -hmm. it tells you the theme of the story, but it doesn't really tell you about who's in the story. So they sort of combine the two things to become Hunter's best friend at school. All right, thank you, Evan. And Purity, would you share the artwork with us, please? Yeah, it's wonderful. And see, you can see the difference of when she goes, she's such a wonderful artist, but she begins with these pencil drawings and then moves to this very fine, very meticulous pen and ink and watercolors. Um, and oftentimes she adds little components when she goes into the final artwork, which is always so much fun to see. Okay, thank you, Purity. You can take that down. Do you have a writer's notebook? That was one of the other questions. That's a good question. When I was younger and I wasn't driving my children all over the place, I used to keep a writer's notebook. And you know what I do now? My kids have gotten, and my husband have gotten very good about um, knowing and putting up with this. I'll be driving around, and I'll come up with an idea, and I don't have anything to write it down on because I'm in traffic, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I'll actually pick up my cell phone, which has an earpiece, and I'll call home, and I'll leave messages to myself, like, you know, <laughs> Hunter scores a goal, or it was a dark and stormy night, those kinds of things. And my family have gotten very good about finding those messages and not deleting them. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that tip. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> it's the best they can do. We have a caller from Florida. Hi, tell us your name and what is your question today? My name's Larry. Hi, my name, my name is Larry. Hi, Larry. Larry. Uh, <laughs> what is your question? Uh, um, is, it hard, is it hard to write books? Larry wants to know if it's hard to write books. Yes, some days are harder than others, Larry. I have to tell you, you ever had a big paper you've had to write? You know, sometimes it flows, sometimes it doesn't. And what you have to do is you just keep working. You don't, you don't say, I can't do anything today. I have writer's block and go running off. You have to try to keep working through it. But most of writing is a lot of fun. It really is. The third part of that original email was your own favorite children's book. I have a lot of favorite children's books. If I had to pick just one, I probably would say, and I'm talking about picture books, is Harold and the Purple Crayon, because mm -hmm. it's all about imagination. And, you know, There's a lot of nodding going on on the yeah, side oh, here. Yeah, it's the best book, <laughs> because it's all about flights of fancy yeah. and what you can do you know, with your imagination. Hi, tell us your name, and what is your question today for Laura? Um, why did you name your um, main character Hunter? Why is the main character named Hunter? Raccoons are hunters. So that was an uh, easy name to pick for him. And also, there are actually some kids who are named Hunter these days, I've come to find. They're always very excited when I get a chance to talk to them. So Hunter came from the fact that raccoons are little hunters. They go after crayfish and things like that. Thank you for calling. Well, let's move on to a question from Ms. Kane's class at Cherry Run Elementary. And they would like to know, why is there a lesson in each Hunter book? That's a good question, too. I don't know that I necessarily started out doing that on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, here's the thing about life and about books. Good books you'll learn from. Life you'll learn from, right? And those are lessons. And a good book is where you can read it and you can picture yourself in that situation and say, hmm, that's the way this character reacted. Maybe that's a good option for me. So I think um, 
the idea of a lesson or something that kids can learn from these picture books just seems like a good idea to do. All right, let's go to another tape. Uh, we have more questions from students from Dogwood. Let's take a look at those. Okay. How do you find the idea of a whisker to whisker? Mrs. Elliot, how did you, why did you get the idea of using raccoons instead of a fox? Mrs. Elliot, are, are you thinking to doing another Hunter and Stripe book? Good questions. How did you think of the idea of whisker to whisker? Well, that goes back to that f the fun you get to have when you've chosen raccoons as um, your characters. Um, if you're going to get them nose to nose, well, you can say snout to snout and whisker to whisker. So it's just, it's mm -hmm. more fun, you know. And why a raccoon instead of a fox? Uh, fox doesn't have opposable thumbs, so they can't <laughs> pick up things. And, you know, I mean, just think about drawing and the fact that Stripe is going to be hurling minnows around in the classroom, which is so, such a funny idea. He needed those thumbs. And before we get to that final question, we have a call from Michaela in Texas. Hi, Michaela. What is your question today? Um... Why did you get the idea of being an author? How did you get the idea of being an author? Uh, I loved to read. I loved books. Uh, I think very early on, I mean, one of my favorite books in my age was Peter Pan. And the whole idea of being able to go to different worlds um, through books was very appealing to me. So I think that's how. And I was, I was curious. I asked how come a lot. And, you know, you can do that without getting yelled at when you're a writer. <laughs> Thank you for calling, Michaela. And I know Lynn, Laura and I were talking before the show, and she actually brought in a story that she wrote when you were eight, I believe you told Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, she's been writing a long time. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this or not. <laughs> if you can see this, this is why I gave up the idea of being an illustrator. <laughs> but when I was about eight years old, I um, started writing these little books, um, storybooks. And it's, isn't it cool that my dad saved this? And ha I just found it the other day. Um, but you know, it's not great. And here's the thing you guys always need to remember. If you keep notebooks and keep, because I did. I actually have a, uh, a novel that was spawned pretty much by a character study that I did of an old man I knew when I was 12 years old. And it wasn't very good, but the idea was there. And if you guys do things like this, you should save it. So. Absolutely. Evan, did you have a question for Laura today? Yeah. Um, why do you switch um, from fantasy to, how do you do it? How do you switch from fantasy to historical fiction? Um, writing, again, one of the reasons I love writing is because you get to learn all the time. And while you're in school, you might think, ew, she must be nuts. But I love to learn. And um, when you write, you can write about all sorts of things. You can do different genres, picture books, you know, you can do middle reader books, you can do young adult fiction. And um, that historical fiction started because I took a story that I had done for the Washingtonian magazine about my dad's homecoming from World War II, and I turned it into a novel for kids your age. And that was the beginning of my doing historical fiction, and I love it. And I know you wrote, recently wrote a book about, based in the, during the Revolutionary War. Yeah, Give I me have liberty. it. <laughs> it's a wonderful book. <laughs> Give me liberty. Yeah. Um, I do like to do those kind of books, too. And you know what's great about doing a lot of different kinds of books is that it really keeps your writing style fresh for different things. And I think I learned to do that as being a journalist. I often tell kids who want to write, be a journalist first, because you learn to write about a lot of different things. Thank you, Evan. Uh, we have a question from James from Ms. Shira's class, and she, he would like to know, are you going to write any new books? And if you are, will there be new characters? Is this uh, more picture books about Hunter, I think? Um, there actually were two more stories about mm -hmm. Hunter that I wrote initially, but we've decided that three is a really good number for a series. So I actually have it right here. <laughs> I've rewritten something for a character called Teresa the Tomboy. And uh, it's funny, I brought it because if you want it to see different editing, it's all marked up here. And I've made all the changes that my editor suggested, and it's really much, much, much better. She's brilliant, Catherine. So. Oh. We have, does anyone else have another question? Puri, did you have a question yes, you'd I like do. to? Okay. Um, how long did it take for your first book to, be, to get published? You know, I wrote the first Hunter and Stripe book back in 1998. 
Were you, how old were you guys then? Were you even born? Yeah. Two. I was three. Three, Two. yeah, Two. okay. <laughs> Picture books take a long time to come out. The average, the fastest it can be done is about a year and a half from writing to production. But because Ms. Munzinger is so remarkable, she has a long waiting list of people who want her to do books, contracts that she has for other books. So um, it can take three years before the book actually comes out. You know, it doesn't take me very long to write it, but all these different processes I've told you about take a lot of time. Thank you. All right, look, we have a final last email question. This is from Izzy. Izzy wrote in an, and also sent in a picture. Dear Ms. Yeah. Elliot, I write a lot of books at my house. Can you give me some advice? Yes, actually, just keep writing, writing, writing. The thing about mm -hmm. um, writing is that it's more craft, I think, than an art. And the more you do it, the better you become. It's just like practicing your instrument, wanting to become a, a musician. The more you practice, the better you'll become doing that. So I say do a lot of writing. Write down anything. Write down little snippets of descriptions, things that you're feeling, things that you've overheard. Sometimes I tell kids I give them permission to um, have um, to be eavesdroppers, which you know sometimes people don't like the sound of, but the idea that you actually listen to what people say and try to repeat it in your writing is really good. I always suggest that people read their writing out loud so that you can hear the pacing and the rhythm of it. I actually was a music major in school as well, and I think that training as a musician helps me in the sound of your writing. So those are all show rather than tell. Use um, short descriptive um, action words if you can rather than longer ones. Mm -hmm. Like there's in uh, Soccer Showdown, I say that he slammed the ball into the goal and he uh, popped it with his foot rather than just saying he dribbled and hit it into the goal. Oh, yeah, it's much more exciting. Yeah, so those kinds yeah. of things. Well, it's great advice. And we've got more questions to ask, but first I want to go ahead and thank you so much for coming back and joining us again. It's my pleasure. And thank my Greenbrier East Elementary students for joining us on the set as well. For more information about Hunter and Stripe and other books written by Laura Malone Elliott, visit her via the web at www.harpercollins.com or lmelliott.com. For more information about this series, visit www.edu slash Fairfax Network. Thank you all for joining us. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Della Kidd. Keep writing, keep reading, and keep dreaming. And I know Allison has another final question for Laura. What do you like to do when you're not writing? Uh, I like being with my kids. And for their soccer players, equestrians, musicians, so I'm always at sidelines watching them do what they do, which is the best thing. And I know there were so many questions. Did anybody have another question you'd like to ask before we, we go off the air? Go ahead. Uh, do you prefer um, typing or writing your novels? You know, I type them. They seem to come out of my fingers better that way if I use the computer. I, um, I was going to do one other great word for you guys to know, right? You know that there are certain things that you have to have in a, in a story. You have to have characters, plot, theme, right? And the plot, you always have a problem that has to be solved, and that's, you ready? Well, it's big word, conundrum. Can you say conundrum for me? Conundrum. Okay, it's a big problem that the character has to solve, and you have to have that, or the plot doesn't work as well. Anybody else have a question? Go ahead. Um, do you write... When you're writing like a picture book or a historical fiction, would you switch in the middle of one of them and start writing a new book? Oh, not in the middle from one book to the other, but I sometimes have two books going at the same time. Particularly with picture books, you can do that. I'm actually trying to do this Teresa the Tomboy book right now, and I'm working on it. Meet the author and get the full story. The backstory. You guys are actually the first to know about this. I haven't even told my editor about this idea. The revised story. The author's story. You just do it. You read, you watch, and you write. And sometimes, quite a story. Writing isn't a job. It's a way of looking at the world and meeting new people. Meet the author. A production of the Fairfax Network.